Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well. This video is going to be a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to get started streaming with Streamlabs OBS to the platform of your choosing. Whether it be YouTube, Mixer, Twitch, etc., this video will be a step-by-step -step tutorial on all of those. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that you want to do is go ahead and navigate to your favorite browser and then go to streamlabs.com. When on streamlabs.com, you can either hit download Streamlabs OBS or you can just hit the big download button right here in the middle. After that is clicked and it is downloading, go ahead and pause the video and then resume it once it's finished. Once Streamlabs OBS is downloaded, what you want to do next um, is really pertinent if you have either A, a lower end PC, or B, only a single PC setup. And this tip essentially is just finding Streamlabs OBS, whether it be via the desktop icon or by searching for it, right clicking it and hitting run as administrator. And by running it as administrator, really what this does, just prioritize Streamlabs and all of its elements and assets, just so that it helps your stream be less latent, laggy, etc. Um, so this is personally what I do since I have a single PC setup. So after you get this open and you're within Streamlabs, the next thing you're going to do is navigate to the bottom left here and hit login. Once you hit login, it's going to ask which platform that you'd like to stream to. Me personally, I'm going to use Twitch, but again, you can use any platform that you want. If you don't see yours here in the list, just hit select platform. So I'm gonna hit Twitch. If you use Twitch, Twitch is going to have you sign into your platform right here. And then it's going to send you an authorization token. You do not have to enter this every time you open Streamlabs OBS, just whenever you sign in. And then go ahead and authorize that this is you that's opening Streamlabs. And after that, we can go ahead and get started. The next thing we're going to do is ensure that your ingest server is correct. I believe Streamlabs actually implemented a new feature where we don't actually have to do anything manually. So we'll see here in a second once this loads. So after this loads, you're going to go to the very bottom, hit the gear icon, go to the top and hit stream. So yes, they actually did implement this really cool feature to where you don't actually have to type in your stream key manually anymore or copy it. It actually just pulls it directly from whichever platform that you're working with, at least with Twitch. If it doesn't automatically, um, then just go to that website and find your stream key and paste it, but I believe it works with every single platform. And for whatever reason, if your ingest server is not working properly, um, just hit custom ingest and you can type that all in. But 99% of the time, recommended settings will work for this. So after you get that working, the next thing we're gonna do is grab a theme for you and then we're going to get your settings working. So I do wanna set up a theme from the get-go with you. I don't wanna like get something new. So what we're actually going to do is go up to the themes button up here in the left. And unless you have, um, I believe, I don't know what they call it, yeah, Prime. Unless you have Streamlabs OBS Prime, some of these aren't gonna be available to you. So what actually what we wanna do is just filter by free. And when you filter by free, you have all these available options that come with a plethora of different widgets and things of that nature. Um, you can actually do a bunch of filtering. So I'm actually just gonna pick this one just because I know the company, Nerd or Die. Once you find one that you like, pick it and then hit install overlay like I just did in the top right corner. After that installs, it should automatically bring you back to this edit pane. And once it does, um, or if it actually didn't, just go ahead up to the top left and hit editor. And then once it brings you back here, go ahead and click the one that you just downloaded. And then that'll take you right here. Go ahead and delete the one that it tells you to delete. The first screen is always just something that is telling you about all the widgets. And then this main screen right here, if you've never used Streamlabs or um, OBS in general, this main screen right here is what your viewers are going to see. So if you ever like need to leave, go to the BRB screen, they'll see that. Stream is ending, they'll see that. Intermission, they'll see that. But the main screen we're gonna work with here is gonna be the end game screen just because every single thing within this in-game screen is gonna be, can be implemented in these smaller ones. So within the in-game screen, um, you're always going to have more things than what you really need at first, just because they wanna give you some options. So you can just hover over the ones you don't want and just delete them. So I never want any of the horizontal ones. It's just a personal preference. Again, this is just gonna be whatever you want to your channel. And I'm just gonna drag this one over here like that. And then all of these widgets and things like these, this all connect directly to your Twitch channel. So, I mean, all these things populate. I didn't pop any of that in. I just did it directly, which is pretty cool. 
So of course now you don't just want your viewers to see a black screen, you want to add some sort of footage, right? So there's a couple ways to do this. You can either do a display capture, which is just ca capturing a certain monitor that you have. You can do a game capture, which ensures that your viewers can only see your game even if you navigate away from it. Or you can do a video capture device, which can be either a webcam or something like an Elgato. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do each one of them. The first one we're gonna do display capture. We're gonna hit add source. I'm just gonna leave it named display capture. And if you have multiple monitors, you can actually select which one you wanna do. I'm gonna select my third monitor, that way we don't get like this mirrored endless effect. Hit okay. And then right here in the sources, do you keep in mind that these are layered. So whichever one is above the other one, that's how it's gonna show up as well. So you always wanna drag like your display or your video capture to like the very bottom. And then that way your webcam overlays and things still populate above that. So, and then same thing with game capture, hit add source, leave it as game capture, name it whatever you'd like. And then you're gonna change that to capture specific window. And then once you have a specific game already opened, you're gonna hit window, um, pull down the drop down, and then just go ahead and click that game and then that'll populate your screen right there. But I don't, actually don't wanna use any of these for this um, specific tutorial. I'm actually going to do um, the Elgato. So I'm gonna um, hide both of those, go back up to add a source. I'm gonna do video capture device. And then within the video capture device, you're gonna hit add source. I'm actually gonna change this name to Elgato. Hit add source. And there's gonna be a couple different sources that are available. So your webcam is also a video capture device, but if you have your Elgato hooked up correctly, so will your Elgato. So just go ahead and click Elgato and then hit done. And do keep in mind, this is gonna take a second to populate. Um, your webcam might just freeze. Um, go ahead and move that to the bottom and we'll wait for that to populate. Here in a second though, your Elgato should be the thing to pretty well populate the screen and it should show your Xbox, PS4, Nintendo Switch, whatever. So there you see is actually my Xbox and it works pretty well. It pretty well right on time in terms of like latency, there really isn't any. And then that shows exactly what I wanted to, which is your Elgato. So the next thing I want to do is add a webcam, hit add source. We're gonna hit video capture device add source. If you ever wanted to like add the same source but to a different scene, you could just double click that source, but I actually want to add a new source. And this is going to be my webcam, add source. Once that adds, my webcam should populate, hit done. And then I want my webcam to be right below my webcam overlay, drag that below. If you actually just hold the shift key and drag one of the corners, you can maneuver this. And the greatest part about this uh, Streamlit OBS is really how intuitive the editor is. It works like this, like Windows. So if you just control click, you can actually highlight multiple things at once and you can make them all bigger at the same time, which is really neat in my opinion. And move them all at the same time as well. So say you just wanna leave it like that. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do is walk through the settings with you guys so you can have like the best overall stream settings for your um, for your internet and things of that nature. So we're gonna go down here to the settings tab. The stream tab was already good. Next, we're gonna to go to output. On the output mode, it's probably set to simple at first. We're gonna change that to advanced. And I'm gonna to try to walk through these as simplistically as possible can it, because it can get kind of advanced. Um, audio track, I'm just gonna leave it at audio track one. If you are more familiar with like the nuances of audio and things like that, you can change this, but I really don't have anything, so I just leave that at one. In terms of encoder settings, this is where it comes down to, again, your setup, whether you have a low-end, high-end PC, or if you're using a dual or single PC setup. X.264 is encoding through your CPU or your processor. NVENC is encoding through your GPU or your graphics card. So in my personal opinion, and I've really researched this a lot, if you're using a single PC setup, and in really almost any case, NVENC is going to be the, the best option. The reason is because your GPU tends to have a lot more wiggle room than your CPU. Because everything that you do in your computer is going through your CPU, why only certain things go through your GPU. So GPU just tends to have more wiggle room, so use the NVENC new in my personal opinion. As well as use Enforce uh, Streaming Server Encoder settings, keep that checked. 
under rate control, leave it on CBR or if it's not there, change it. This stands for controlled bit rate. And all this means is that whenever you select a bit rate, Twitch and Streamlabs will do their best to keep your stream at around that bit rate instead of jumping from like 1,000 to 9,000, which would cause like latent spikes in your stream. It tries to keep it right around that number. And in terms of bit rate, um, bit rate can be kind of tricky. So what I always do is I go to speedtest.net to check what your upload speed is. And then if you hit go, it'll go ahead and run a test and tell you exactly what your upload speed is. And then the next thing you can do is just go to Google or whatever um, browser you use and type in Twitch bitrate guide. And a guide will pop up saying essentially what bitrate you need to stream at certain resolution and frames per second values. So it really just depends on what type of game you play. And these you do have to have kind of higher end PCs to do some of this stuff. Um, but I mean, you can still stream 1080p 60 FPS, um, even if you have a low end PC. I've actually done it. And you just have to follow these settings pretty well exactly. But if you do have issues, just try lowering it a little bit. For this specifically, um, and do always keep in mind that a lot of people are gonna be watching your streams like on their cell phones and things like that. So you're, they're really not gonna get some of these values anyway. For this specifically, I am going to be just doing a 720p 30fps stream since I'm playing NBA 2K, and I'm using a um, Elgato, which is going to utilize more CPU, so I just don't want to bog down my system. So I'm going to be just typing in these exact um, values as they are right here. So you need a bit rate of 3000, keyframe interval of 2, preset was quality, profile was high, keep look ahead turned off, leave cycle visual tuning off, or on, sorry. GPU will always be zero unless you have more than one GPU if you're running SLI. They run as like um, programming array values, they start at zero. So your first GPU would be zero, your second one would be one. And then leave max B frames at two. In terms of audio, I just leave, the, leave this as is, 44.1 and then stereo. And in terms of video, your base canvas resolution would essentially be what you are streaming in. So 1920 by 1080, um, what you're playing the game in. If you're playing in 4K, that would populate and you could use it. Same thing for output scaled resolution. This is what you're gonna want to stream to your viewers in. So if you wanna try 1080, go ahead. Just go ahead and try it. As well as with uh, 1280 by 720, just really pick what you want. For this one, like I said, I'm gonna do 1280 by 720. And then for downscale filter, do Lanscos, 32 samples. FPS type, leave it at common. And then for uh, common FPS values, uh, I normally, like I said, for this one, I'm going to do 30. If you want to change it to something like 60, just follow this bitrate guide and change the bitrate so that it can keep up and get you that 60 FPS. And then, um, so we went through those settings. I'll make sure they saved real quick. They did. Just go ahead and hit done. Um, that's pretty much it. If you wanted to right now, you could go ahead and hit go live and it would broadcast. And then you could hit this down here and you could monitor your stream, see if you're dropping frames and adjust those settings accordingly. But next, I actually want to help you guys set up some alerts and things like that as well. So you're just going to navigate to this left and hit dashboard. That will pull up a new window on your browser. You're going to go over here to alert box. And on alert box, you're going to have all of your different alerts right here. And then, so let's go ahead and make a follow alert. So in the follow alert, make sure it's enabled. Select whichever layout you want for your image and text, your alert animation, the message you want to populate whenever someone does follow, your text animation. And then for your image, um, you can either hit change media and just add an image that you have on your computer. Or what I like to do is just navigate to Giphy or Jiffy.com, whatever pronunciation you prefer. Type in something that you like. So you could type in like uh, uh, Tokyo Ghoul. See if they have anything for that. They do. You could just type in Tokyo Ghoul. And then for whichever one you like, you could honestly just uh, hit the link right above it. It'll copy that to your clipboard. Go back to your alert dashboard. Hit the link. Control V it or paste it in there and then boom, it's right there. Same thing for media. Find whatever media you like, copy it in there or hit change media after you've edited something online, whatever you want to do. You can adjust all your sound volumes and then just hit save whenever you're done.
And then I'm not going to walk through the rest of them because they're literally all the exact same thing. And then to ensure that um, it actually populates like in your chat whenever someone follows, just make sure you have CloudBot turned on and then do this right here in your chat. Just type forward slash mod Streamlabs. I'm not actually going to do that because I don't use Streamlabs. I'm just doing a tutorial for it. So to ensure that it works, what we're going to do next is go back to Streamlabs and you're gonna hit add source. You're gonna add an alert box, which is actually what we just edited online. Hit add source, just leave it as alert box. You can change all the settings, the width, the height. You can turn certain ones on and off directly from Streamlabs, which is pretty cool. We're gonna have a delay for it. Hit done. And then to test to see if it works, you can hit test widgets, test follow. And there it is, it pops up. It pops up with the exact thing that you just, uh, the exact message that you just typed in. Everything works perfectly. You can do that for all of them to see if it works. Um, the next thing I just wanna show you guys how to do is just to add your donation link to your Twitch stream. Very simple. Go back to that um, same exact dashboard that we were just on, hit settings connect your PayPal account, and then just copy this link right here. Go to your personal Twitch channel, edit panel, add an image for your, or if you don't already have a panel, you're gonna have to add a panel, and then add a image for it. Just copy that link right here, image links to, just hit paste. Paste it right there. You can add a description if you want, and then once you unedit it, it'll be there for you. And that's really all there is to it, guys. Um, Streamlabs OBS is quite intuitive. I just personally use Stream Elements, which I'll be making a video for here shortly. So if you want to know how to use Stream Elements, follow that. But this should get you going on pretty much anything that you want. If you have any questions, drop them down below in the comments. Um, as well as let me know how I did with this video. Um, leave a like if you liked it. Um, comment what I could do better if you don't like it. It just keeps me motivated, lets me know things I need to work on, also things I did well on. So again, guys, that's going to be it for this video. Any questions, leave them down below. Thanks, guys. Peace.